Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. I hope you're having a splendid day. And today I thought that we would have a bit of a look at Sydney and uh, basically Sydney before it got its jewellery, before the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House were put up, what was going on in Sydney. So let's get into this. Okay, so the Sydney Harbour Bridge, uh, we all have seen it, Australian Heritage listed steel arch bridge across Sydney Harbour. There had been plans to bridge the harbour since 1815, which of course is just uh, 27 years after allegedly the first boat hit the shores of Sydney. Captain Cook and the First Fleet arrived in 1778. They landed in Sydney and by 1815, they were talking about building a bridge. So in 1900, they uh, eventually organized a worldwide competition for the design and construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And basically it got held up because of the First World War and construction didn't actually start until 1923 with the official ceremony to mark the looming of the first sod, uh, 28th of July. Now, t where they were building the bridge, uh, at the points on the land, there was already a lot of uh, construction and there were people living there. And an estimated 469 buildings on the North Shore, both private and commercial buildings, were demolished to allow construction to proceed with little or no compensation being paid work on the bridge itself commenced with construction of approaches and approach spans and by September 1926 they had started to pour the concrete pillars. So that's a quick background of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and construction basically yeah since day one they said that they needed a bridge it took them over a hundred years to get it going and Basically, uh, we couldn't afford it because it was a World War One. Then it went straight into the Depression and there was no money in Australia while they were building hundreds of other buildings, of course. And so what happened is we lent, loaned the money from the British Crown and Australia, I think we paid it off in the 1990s. Okay, and here's a little look-see at um, what they demolished. Is it, they, all these pictures are from around 1900, so this is 20, 25 years before they started demolishing things for the bridge. And as you'll see in this photo, it looks like they've already started to de demolish things. We've got this obvious, you know, look at the size of these bricks. This is obviously an old world building or what's left of it, and we've got some down here, but whatever's here, or was here, is just I don't know if they found it like this because it doesn't really look that rubbly, but that's it's an interesting shot. As you can see, horse and carts. And again, an interesting thing to notice is these buildings. See how they step down? You can see that because they're on a hill. That's how they should be built. So when we see all these mud flood buildings that have got, you know, a straight roof, and <laughs> but the hill still goes down and covers them up, that's, that's a mud flood. This is how they should be built. So this is obviously a, you know, a normal hill that wasn't really flooded. And here's another shot. This one, again, the same kind of thing. Just kind of looks like, I mean, if this is 1900, why would they be building houses and then, you know, the colony is only 100 years old, just over. Why would they be demolishing brick houses? Now, clearly something's happened here. And look at the size of these cobblestones. And this as well, it's hard to see the perspective with these people, but that looks like a fairly large street lamp. Um, I'm not sure if it's gas or what the deal is there. This is also, so this is all, it's Dawes Point, uh, and it includes uh, a place called The Rocks. And this is, uh, part of what was there, part of the, the buildings. And as you can see, this looks like there's actually a window in there. See, there's a frame. And it looks like it's yeah, been filled in, filled up with something. 
Uh, this is another shot. As you can see, you know, two, three story brick buildings all the way down the road. And this is just says Elizabeth Street, I'd say around 1900. You can see there's tram, line, uh, tram tracks in the ground. You know that these roads are in a bit of rough shape. There's one person here, I think that is that a person, so there's no one around. Electricity, it's just a you know, it's a whole strange scene when you look at these pictures back. Turn of century here again, this is the same area. And again, we've got all these huge brick buildings, but why have they smashed this one down? And just notice the size of the bricks compared to these people. And they look, I know these are in the foreground, but they just look larger than normal, don't they? And what are they doing? What are all these people doing? Uh, so this is what they knocked down. Here's a shot. You can see it was completely built out. It was terraced down to the water. You know, big three-story brick construction everywhere. In the background over here, there's a huge cathedral. And over here, you can see more spires popping up. So this is around 1900. Sydney, another one. And this is what I've something else I've noticed just in these photos, but I'm starting to notice it. Is these walls, a lot of things seem to be built up. You can see that's brick construction. You can see here the lines. And look at these buildings. Smashed windows. No windows. The doors look, they just look like they've been boarded up. No roof on this one. This one's got a roof. This one hasn't. This one hasn't. Is that, I don't even, is that, is that a hole or a crack? I'm not sure what that is, but look at these buildings. And this is 1900, so look, I mean, this is, you know, you don't smash windows like that if you're taking buildings down, or obviously if you're building them. I mean, these look completely found. No root. And this is what we see so often, is they're not building these buildings, they're finding them, founded, right? <laughs> they find them. Uh, find cities and they say yes and now it's founded they find these buildings and then they renovate them right they renovate them but it's a renovate it's a law term and it means to basically to change uh, the legal standing of the building so what they're doing is they're coming in they're saying literally they're saying who owns this building just shouting it out and if no one says me they they just renovate it and it becomes theirs and then they refit it fix it up and say look what we built Oh, you can pay us for that now. Give us money because we built it. This is beer carts. This is a brewery. Here. So got all the workers. Obviously, this is uh, late 1800s. Got a horse. So I'd say this is Tui's Brewery. Although that sign before said Tooth. In a previous picture, so I'm not sure if Tui's originated, you know, originated as Tooth's Brewery. But look at this huge building. Three stories. We've got massive uh, chimneys everywhere. Another two-story huge brick construction. And really, all they've got is horse and cart. This is how they can deliver the beer. This is the best they've got. But they, but they can build this. I mean, come on, <laughs> just this building alone, I mean, the work to go into that and just the amount of bricks that would go into just this construction. And it's there standing 18, late 1800s. Another shot, look at this road. You know, not looking good, electric trams. And look at the size of this. You know, <laughs> Just a little wall down the side, right? And why would you do this? It's huge. It's like, and you can see it's got all the florets and the stuff around the top, like we see on pillars, on the columns we see everywhere. And of course, you know, <laughs> the obelisk in the background. Look at that thing. And I'm also looking at these trees. If you look at these trees, see how thick 
the stump the trunks are compared to how much tree there is these have all been cut all been cut down so they used to be they would have been a lot lot bigger on the size of those trunks so they've actually all been cut all of them i wonder why and of course tartarian stuff all down the street i mean as far as the eye can see circa 1900 in sydney another one and this is all pretty much all got demolished pretty much in the 20s and 30s and of course you've got to understand this is what they're saying this was built up what they say over 400 buildings built up um so what in 100 just over 100 years 120 years and buildings like this and they just knock them all over and of course this is a mud flutter so we saw those buildings before where it stepped down the hill this see these these don't you can see that that's the same line across all of them and as we come down we've got steps going up we've got a door half sunk we've got these windows in the ground mud flood so this is circular key this is the same side as uh, the rocks that we were looking at and as you can see we've got this this remnants of this brick building or stone wall in the foreground obviously i mean look at this huge spire on a what's that at least a four-story building and we see this uh, we've seen this before this sort of stepped brickwork that they have on the front and it sort of steps up and of course this we're going to have a look at this is now gone this is uh, fort macquarie and it's a castle was a castle and look at this what's it one two three four five at least a five-story brick building over there 1900 so this is literally um 110 years after the first boat rocked up the first fleet you know and all they had was what that boat had you know could carry and most of that was food and convicts we're told so where did all the tools come from where did all the construction you know where did all the industry okay so this is circular key milson's point and this is what used to be there this is a, tra a tram station the trams used to come down into this i think that's a tram there we've got horse and carts and basically the bridge now just goes from here across to sort of here and of course in the i mean look at this built up in the background huge buildings everywhere another shot before the bridge <laughs> this is customs house look at that thing and of course just i mean it's just completely built out 1900 and like i said they came in and then bulldozed a lot of this most of it right, so i guess a, a bridge is a good excuse to get rid of some history this is the castle this is on the other side it, they renamed it obviously <laughs> fort mccrow because they didn't build it because the story is again convicts built this unskilled labor convicts and so the story goes fort macquarie was a square uh, castellated battlement fort built in 1798 at benelong point sydney new south wales australia 1798 10 years after the first ship rocked up with nothing just food and <laughs> convicts and they say that they just started building castles within 10 years a half moon battery on the east point of Benelong point was constructed in may 1798 when the ship hmas supply was withdrawn from service lieutenant william kent and crew were assigned to the main battery the battery supposedly consisted of some guns taken from the hmas supply though these were too few and too small to be of much use what were they defending against this was a brand new colony 10 years old what were they who were they defending against by this time the dutch had given up the french had given up no they had no one was competing to settle australia and they say they were building castles in sydney harbour 10 years after they landed to what 
defend what? This is just silly. Apart from the fact they didn't have the skills, the industry, anything. I mean, this, let's have a look. Does that look like glass? I mean, these could be retrofitted, but why would they be making these clearly glass frames in the side of the building? If they didn't have glass, you know, what did they say? Well, we'll have glass in 80 years, guys. Let's just get it set up now because they're not retrofitted. You know, we're told that castles had these, you know, the slits. Oh, yeah, they've got slits to let light in. I mean, it's just silliness. And look, I mean, and look, they don't look at the wall. All this would have had to be constructed. The whole deck it's sitting on. That's a seawall. Look at that straight into the water. And you can see it's all block construction. And it's got all the usual, you know, features of these castles. Built by convicts. Governor Macquarie directed that a fort be built between 1817 to February 1821 under the direction of Francis Greenway. The fort was named after Governor Macquarie. So four years, four years they built that. The battery consisted of 15 pieces of ordnance, 10 24 pounders and 5 6 pounders. Three sides of the fort's abutted Sydney Harbour. So it's literally jutting out into the water. Just like many star forts that we see. And here is another picture of the castle. And see this wall? Just notice, you know, how angular it is. And this wall over here as well. Look at this, comes up to a point here. Got our turret, our tower. And these are rounded, and we've, we see this as well. And I have noticed that the, the ones, the forts, the star forts or the stars, with the rounded, uh, what are they called, cavaliers, tend to have the more castle-looking bits in the centre. And when they're very starry, they tend to have cathedrals, what we call cathedrals. This is a drawing, obviously. And as you can see, it looks even bigger now. What's this? They didn't mention that before, did they? And look, this, this wall's literally right on the water, going down into it. And it's, look, see how these are the rounded bits coming off? Starting to look a bit more star forty. You know, buildings up here in the background. And guys, this, this would be, uh, what, 1823, 25? So we're talking, you know, 37 years after landing. We've got a castle here with a full wall. Another big castle, you can see it's got towers on it, big castle there, big brick buildings in the background. Here's another one over here. Luna Park in Sydney, the site located on the shore next to the northern end of the Sydney Harbour Bridge was in 1806 part of a farm, but in 1924 the site was taken over by large workshops and equipment used to build the Sydney Harbour Bridge. However, in the early 30s, a gentleman named Herman Phillips turned the area into the first version of Luna Park. Opened in 1935, the new park was based on the park of the same name at Coney Island, New York, and mimicked earlier editions in Australia set up in Melbourne, 1912, and Glenelg, Adelaide in 1930. So I don't know if we've still got the Adelaide Luna Park. I haven't heard of that, but there's definitely a Luna Park in Melbourne as well. So they're saying this was built in the 1930s. 30s of course you know they don't give us any kind of you know maps or who built it or where all the stuff came from anything like that this is a shot from 1948 big spinning wheel and of course this shot so this here is a bit of the bridge and you can see the train tracks come down here and look at this this work here here as well and this is what they so often neglect to mention you know they, they tell you about the bridge and they built the bridge and I'm sh I'm pretty sure they did. It looks like they did. You know, they had, you know, the, the equipment to be able to do it then, didn't they? They had all machinery and, you know, uh, diesel machinery, petrol, steam, all this stuff, cranes, lifters. So they could do that, but they never mentioned stuff like this. So look at the work that would have had to gone in. This is all brick carrying a rain, uh, railway tracks and it's huge. Now, a lot of that was there, I would say, but this whole, you know, what's happening here, they've had to sort of join onto it. So 
you know, they, they don't mention this at all. That just sort of happened, it just happened to be there. So this is old world stuff, guys. I mean, you can look at it, you know it is. This is Luna Park. This is the entrance, big face, big towers, and we've got all these, you know, rides and everything. And this big old world building right on the water. And that, again, that, that style of building that you see, uh, like they call them baths and things, they're always on the water. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that one. Okay, so this is the uh, the tram, the yeah, trams, electric trams. So this would be, this is before the bridge. They knocked all this over. See a nice clock tower here and the bridge goes over there. So this would have joined on to that uh, big train track that we just saw. Here's another shot. Again, horse and carts. This is 1900. You can see the, what they're wearing. Got this beautiful Tartarian train, tram station. Obviously, this is the bridge, and this is where they've converted it uh, to join into the bridge at the, the tra railway tracks. And this is probably, well, we've still got a horse and cart here. So this 1920s, well, when was it open? The 30s? Horse and cart going across the bridge in the 30s. There you go. Now we've seen that. This is another shot. Uh, York Street at Wynwood Square. No. No date. You can see horse and buggies. So probably, you know, early 1900s. But just look at... But just look at these buildings. One, two, three, four, five stories. And all the way down the street. Huge domes down here. And just... Shoulder to shoulder, huge buildings. Look, there's even a dome up here. Is that a dome? There. Oh, and of course, they whack their, you know, their crappy advertising on everything. Try to re-brand everything, like like the front of this. It's probably been added. They do that a lot in Australia. They add these verandas to change the look. But I mean, just look at that. You can. <laughs> 1900. 112 years after they literally landed here with a ship. No industry, no nothing. And this is another shot. This is uh, the castle or part of it. I'm not sure what. So this is what we get at the front of the castle. This is, I think, the, the building that we saw in the background of that other photo because clearly it's a lot bigger and back off the water. So this part of... Uh, Fort Macquarie got turned into a tram station and then they, they knocked it and demolished it in the 50s. Uh, basically, this is where the Opera House is now. So, you know, this is the story built 10 years after they landed here. Uh, what was that? So it was early in the 1800s or 1810, was it? Um, and then what? They had it sit there. They never used it as a fort. Turned it into a tram station and then knocked it over. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. You don't do things like that. Here's another shot. This is the Horton's Palace Emporium. And now it's the site of the World Square. So they've knocked this over as well. Look at this building. Look at this tower here. And the work and the intricacy. And, you know, you've got the porticos, everything. You know, completely in alignment with each other. Antiquitex stuff everywhere, and of course they knocked it over. Here's another shot of the tower. And you can see here, they just come along and just cover everything up. Australian Hotel 1932. And just, just the, you know, we see this a lot, just the way they do the facades, bits popping out. All gone, all bowled over. And here is a shot of George Street, looking north, showing the old burial ground and the town hall. 1842, they say this is, guys, 1842. 
as you can see, dirt roads, horse and cart, and brick big buildings, domes, Antiquatech, three story brick buildings. This 1842 is exactly 54 years, people, after the first fleet, the first boat landed in Botany Bay with convicts and food. So they did pretty well to get all this built, or at least renovated, right? Here's another shot. This is 1946, but just look at the size of these people compared to you know the buildings. You can see this is this is the first floor. All right, look at that. So it's just ridiculousness. There's no way in the world that a new colony that was basically in financial hardship most you know if you read the story basically all the way up to the 50s we were struggling financially but look what they've created what they've built massive oversized buildings columns completely unnecessary this is uh sydney's garden palace that stood for just three years so this was part of um the sydney exhibition okay and here we can get a bit of a closer look you can just notice all these walls that are built already all across the water. And look at the size of this thing. Look at that dome. Oh, three years it was standing for, they say. Built for the Sydney Exhibition, which was in the late 1800s, 1898, I believe. And just look over here. This is completely built out. Completely. Now what it says here, stood for just three years, 1879 to 1882. So this picture, with all these buildings in the background, is 1882 at the latest. Completely, like the whole place is built out. It's just Tartaria. Look at this thing. And horse and carts to build it. Ridiculous in this. <laughs> This is it after it was destroyed by fire, of course, because fire does that. So more ridiculousness. So this is this is all the stuff that they've destroyed. Castles, you know, massive dome buildings, all these Tartarian buildings, all destroyed uh, to put up the bridge and the and the opera house. So it does beg the question, doesn't it? Is that just a good excuse to get rid of some history? Because clearly, when we look at this, none of this is really adding up. And one more thing I wanted to touch on is this. Plague in Sydney, 1900. They, uh, these are selected images of quarantine areas in Sydney following the outbreak of the bubonic plague in 1900. The outbreak was epidemic in scale. From January to August 1900, with 303 people stricken and 103 people dying. Oh my God. The population of Sydney in 1901 was 112,137 people. And their huge epidemic killed 103 people. Does that sound familiar, guys? Okay, so here's some photographs of... Uh, is this it or is this it here? Here's someone's kitchen. <laughs> People standing outside. This is what they could build, little tin shacks. So there's a huge storm going on outside, if you can hear things. Uh, this is during the cleansing operations in the quarantine area of Sydney, 1900 under the supervision of Mr. George McCready. What's going on here? The, the nice, you know, construction along here. Brick buildings up here. And this one, is are they just demolishing it? 
and this is all just shanty town, you know, stuff, bits of tin and wood. But what are they doing to? The, and what are they saying? Because of quarantine, they have to destroy houses. All these people sitting on the street, no social distancing back then. Here again, you know, everyone's cordoned off and the police state's taken over. God knows what they're doing, burning stuff, dousing stuff down, destroying buildings. Got this beautiful thing in the background. So this is not a new, uh, you know, it's not a new scam, guys. And here's someone's kitchen again. So, yeah, the bubonic plague back in 1901. And as you saw, what was it? Uh, 103 people died out of uh, 112,137. So nothing, you know, just, just like now, it's less than the normal flu probably. Um, what it says is, in 1900, the Department of Health believed the first defense against the, the disease was the extermination of rats. This resulted in the employment of 3,000 men at the height of the epidemic to catch and kill rats. Cleansing and disinfecting operations in quarantine areas lasted until March 1900 and included, here we go, the demolition of slum buildings. Okay, that was clearly a brick build. All the buildings you see knocked over were clearly brick. They're not, they weren't slums. Uh, they may have been worn down and not in the best condition when they found them. Uh, but there you go. And here we just have a couple more looks at some uh, panoramas of Sydney. So this is all again uh, early 1900s and you can just see completely built out the whole way down. Look at then just things like these steps and this balustrade and the way that's built. That's now this is stuff that never gets mentioned, even though they can't really account for any of the buildings. I mean, look, this is just completely built out. Was that a walkway? There's no cars on it. It was probably before cars. Look at this, you know, just a normal street, but again, look at the oversizedness of everything. What's this? A street pole with the size of this guy. And of course, Tartarian buildings everywhere, everything in complete symmetry, a couple of domes down here, another one there. So, you know, this is not the, the story that we're told. You see the building here at Tonga Park Zoo. Another dome here at the zoo. So I wonder what all these buildings were, what all these places were, you know, what, what their original use was, because they've obviously been found and repurposed. And a lot of them, you know, are castles and zoos and things and water, uh, you know, bathhouses at the beach. I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's the turn of the century in Sydney. You know, here's the top of a spire just in the foreground. We've got statues popping up everywhere. Huge domes, spires, you know, 10, 12 story buildings with domes on the top. All this architecture that looks like a mud flutter. You know, big Greco Roman esque building. It's just. And then down here, we just have like a little single story building that is what they could build probably. So there we go. Bit of a walk through Sydney, you know, before the bridge and the opera house, what it used to look like when it was found. Uh, and then they just look like they've just used some excuses to get in there and bulldoze as much of our story as they could. And they, of course, are still trying to do this. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Thank you for spending some time with me. Have an awesome day, and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.